Mission Impossible, Across the Fast and the Furious Dead Reckoning Part 1 is out in theaters, and I had a chance to watch it. I'm gonna tell you how it is. There's a lot of Part 1s this year. At an easy breezy cover girl, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 is the longest Mission Impossible movie so far. I think. I didn't actually look, I'm just assuming, because every movie now is stupidly long. This is going to be a spoiler-free review, if you choose to accept that. I would appreciate a subscription by just, you know, hitting that subscribe wherever you can find it. It's, it's somewhere. It's all, it's all over, actually, so just please do that. Let's talk about this film. Tom Cruise is back, baby, as Ethan Hunt, and he's got his whole crew with him. We got Simon Pegg as Benji. We got my always beautiful Rebecca Ferguson as Ilsa. And we got Vin Rames as Luther, who somehow turned into the Oracle in this film. I don't know if it was just me. But every time he talked, it was in like riddles or as some sort of sage advice. I don't remember that in the past movies so much. But here, whenever he's talking to Ethan, he's like, In the future, you're going to have to make a choice. Either the red or the blue pill. And whatever you choose, chaos will follow. It just felt like they were on a park bench and Agent Smith was right around the corner. And he's telling him like, Listen, dude, this is what you have to do to win the Matrix. Haley Atwell joins the team as Grace. Solid pick. Very nice to see her. Very nice to see all of her. Vanessa Kirby's back as the White Widow, and we also have Mantis here from Guardians of the Galaxy. Played by Palm Clementia, French name. I can't pronounce things. Let's keep going. Actually, let's not keep going. Let's pump the brakes and talk about Palm's character here for a second. Paris? Easily the highlight of the film for me, outside of TC, of course, running. He's doing this a lot. You gotta love it every time. But Palm is straight up Harley Quinning it throughout this film. I can't imagine another critic has made this correlation. I'm sure I'm the first one because I'm such a creative genius on this platform. But yeah, she was giving me shades of Joker. She was giving me shades of Harley. In fact, I think she was kind of doing it better. I loved her. I, I absolutely loved her here. Let's talk about what else I loved. The action. Just as fantastic as always. Big set pieces, Tom Cruise is jumping off shit, stuff's blowing up, he's climbing up a train at one point, which is easily my favorite part of the film, and it straight up seemed like something out of Uncharted 2. In fact, a lot of this movie felt like set pieces from Uncharted 2, or the series in general, and I was all for it, because that game is awesome. There's a few villains in this film, naturally we have double crosses, triple crosses, criss crosses, will make you jump crosses, and then there is the main threat. The AI, the artificial intelligence that's everywhere, all the time, seeing and hacking into everything, simply known as the Entity. If you're a fan of drinking and a bigger fan of getting blackout drunk within the first 20 minutes of a film, I have a game for you. It's called The Entity. Every time they mention the word, you take a shot and you are completely lifeless on the ground before this movie even hits the halfway mark. They say that word so many times. It's a little bit insult. It's almost as much as family is said in a Fast and the Furious film. And much like the Fast and the Furious franchise or some of these others that have gone on for decades at this point, you kind of know what you're getting into with the Mission Impossible movie, just like a John Wick movie. They get bigger, they get louder, they get more over the top. This is no different. So if you're on board, if you're with this mission, if you chose to accept, you're probably gonna love this. I liked it a lot. I wouldn't say I loved. I honestly felt the writing was pretty weak in this movie. It felt a lot dumber than past Mission Impossible movies that seemed pretty sharp. This one was just kind of like, eh. There's like two agents constantly running after Ethan. They're, they're like the two stooges. They're, they're everywhere all the time. They're constantly getting in his way, falling off shit, shooting at things. It, it's just slapstick nonsense, but they never leave. It's like, whose side are you on? I also felt this plot was incredibly convoluted. It was hard to know which agency who was working for and what side anyone was on. There was so many different agencies going throughout this flick that it just felt a little disjointed and I had a hard time really connecting to any of it. It was pretty much just, okay, they're doing exposition dumps again and then we're gonna have an awesome chase scene for like 25 minutes. More exposition dumps, which there are three or four that go on for a long time and then more cool action. And that's pretty much the summary of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Now, I will say, unlike Across the Spider-Verse and Fast 10, the ending, the, the Part 1 cliffhanger of this is way more satisfying than those two films. This just has kind of a, 
a more completed story arc, even though there's still more story to tell. It felt like a natural conclusion to a film. Whereas Across the Spider-Verse and Fast 10 leave on these giant cliffhanger, like big crescendo building moments. And so that leaves you feeling unsatisfied. This feels like a complete picture and I'm excited for what's to come. Definitely not my favorite in the franchise. I'd probably throw it somewhere in the middle of the mix. But even a mid-tier Mission Impossible movie is still a great time at the theaters. Well, those are my thoughts on Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. What a title. Oh, what a, what a title. Let me know yours. Have you seen the movie yet? Are you excited to see the movie? Put it in the comments. It helps the algorithm, I think. I don't really know what the YouTube entity is going to do with any of this anymore. But like, share, do all that stuff, and I think it will keep it happy. You have to feed the entity to make it happy. If you've been following me for a while and you want to show some support, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's a few different tiers you can sign up for, show some support, or you can become a member right here on YouTube via that join button. Any little extra help you can give means a lot. This is a passion project for me. I have a full-time job, a family, and different adult stuff going on. So really, I mean, it, crowdfunding helps quite a bit. I would appreciate it. Take care. Thank you.